Hey, Jay. How, how are you, my man? I'm good. Now, um, is it Chandra Shikar? That's how he was telling me it's pronounced. How is it? It's uh, it's Chandra Sekar. Chandra Sekar. Yeah. You must get I'm sure it's almost impossible for people to pronounce your name. Well, my, you know, my full name is Giant Jumbalingam <laughs> Chandra Sekar, which, which translates to Victorious Large Penis Rising Moon. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, my parents didn't tell me about that until I was out of college. I could have really used that. You're, are you Indian? Is that what nationality yeah, you Indian, are? Indian, yeah. And were you born in India or over here? I was born here? in Chicago. Okay, all right. Your parents came over from India? Yeah, they were from uh, South India, Madras. Yeah. Do people, when they, for instance, after this Boston thing, this yeah. uh, this this bombing that's over there, you're dark skinned. Do you? And and people are, well, they're mildly. Uh, well, how can I put it? They're mildly intellectually disabled. That's a good way of instead of using the R word. That's good. Uh, they see a dark-skinned guy and they go, oh, he's from the Middle East, he must be a terrorist. Do you get that all the time, that people think you're, you know... You know, look, I, I've had weird situations. Like, I I, I walked by some uh, some skinheads in, in Philly, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, whenever that happens, you're like, oh, God, you know, I hope... I hope they don't say anything and they start, you know, they're like, hey, Muhammad, hey, you know? <laughs> and I'm not... I'm not a Muslim, right? So, yeah. like, the fact that I that unfortunately Indians we kind of look like the guys who cause some of the trouble. Yeah, uh, a, a lot. And so, uh, <laughs> but Indians don't cause much trouble. No, we're the peaceful. only with the Pakistanis. We're the peaceful guys, yeah. right? And yeah. so, these skinheads kind of got up on me, and they started sort of just kind of, hey, hey, you want to, you know, like, and I was like, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight these guys. I'm probably gonna lose, sure. but I'll, I'll, I'll see what How I can do. How many of them are three? There's four? three of them, yeah. right? And they're like, hey, "Islam sucks," and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, all right." Uh, and, and then one of them cocks their heads and goes, "Super Troopers," <laughs> right? And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh my God, we're huge fans of that movie, dude!" Right? <laughs> and so I, 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 I have, I have been, and I ended up taking a picture with these guys, oh these three God. skinheads. And you know, did the whole time were you taking this picture, going, "What a holes these guys are"? You know what, man? I was just happy to get out of there without, without getting your ass, getting ass beat. My ass yeah. And the truth is, it's it's odd. So like like when I get on a plane. You know, there there are a lot of fans who've seen the movie, and they're all kind of giving me a smile. And then there are sort of some of these older guys who are like, "Let me just tell you," they're giving me a look. They're like giving me a mean face. They're like, "Let me tell you, I'll take you down with a you, butter you knife know, if, if you, you try at, anything." Yeah, you look in that backpack too long. I'm I'm going to be the guy. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, when I'm on a plane and I see another brown guy. And I'm I'm looking at him. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna take you out, right? I have this sort of fantasy that I'm like, Indian saves the plane. You know, he looked kind of like the bad guy, but now we know he's good. Well, that is, it is true. I mean, it's I guess it's hard uh, to, to admit, but I mean, there is a, an amount of racial profiling. When when I get on a plane, I fly fairly frequently. Yeah. I do. I look at I look at people who I think are from the Middle East and I I pay much more attention to them. And maybe it's wrong and I have a feeling this thing in Boston, I think it's going to end up being more homegrown than than You do. For I that's what I think. It's a it's But a, who knows? It's a weird thing, you know, that Boston thing is it's it's uh it's horrifying. It's terrible. It's like so pointless. Yeah. All those legs. It gets me angry I'm like I'm furious. I, I see that and I I I get angry about it, like that someone just uh, just just decides I'm going to blow up these innocent people. Like when yeah. I see when I fly into New York City, I see where the Twin Towers used to be. To this day, over ten years later, I still get angry. Like I, I literally yeah. want to wring someone's neck when I see that. Yeah. No, I mean I I do too. Yeah. I do too, and. Admittedly, as someone who only sort of looks like the guys who, who did nine eleven. <laughs> I admit, I'm hoping it's not uh, it's not a Muslim. I'm yeah. hoping it is homegrown, and I know that's insane to be rooting for. You know, oh God, I hope it's a white guy, but it's like God, please keep the keep the light off us. Are you <laughs> Hindu then, or what? Uh... I mean, I'm technically Hindu, but I mean, uh, I certainly wasn't raised with any of that. I'm just sort of really kind of independent. I have, so your, your parents come over from India. Uh, yeah. did, did they have the typical story? I mean, are, were they poor when they come over or were they, they well, must have had a way to get over here. So yeah, they must have I had mean, some they, amount you of money, know, right? they don't, the uh, Indians who come here are, well, they, they were doctors, right? Oh. So they, they met here in Chicago and, and my dad ended up knocking my mother up and- With you? Well, no, with my sister. Okay, older sister. And then he called my grandmother uh, back in India and said, "Hey, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to get married." Right? He was already married, 
And uh, my grandmother's like, no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. And he and she got on the phone with my mother and, and offered her jewels to walk away. No kidding. My mom's already six months pregnant at this point. <laughs> and it started their relationship in a very bad way. But uh, Awkward, ultima- right. ultimately, yeah, I mean, they came to Chicago and they and they. Uh, you know, they were doctors here, and th- this sort of... Were they already doctors before they came, or yeah. did they go to school out They here, worked in the ER in Cook County Hospital in Chicago, and, uh, you know... Like- this kind of stuff happens over in India, that, like, arranged marriages and offering the jewels. I mean, is that still prevalent today? I mean, that's what I envision it. Well, it is. It's, it is somewhat. Like, when I went to India, uh, it was years ago, but I went to India, and I was probably, like, 23, and, and all, you know, like, we'd go to our friends' houses... And one by one, these girls would start showing up with their mothers. And the concept was, hey, there's this dude who's in America. At least he's still Indian. Let's work this out. And there are all these hot chicks coming over. And I'm like, Mom, you really think you're going you're gonna to marry me off? She goes, no, I have no doubt that you will not marry one of these girls. But you could get a date out of it. Now, did you then, are you married now? Or I'm you married, a, You're yeah, married. Yeah. Did you marry an Indian? Or I you... married a, a, a Baltimore girl. She's uh, Irish, Irish-American. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And now, what did your parents think of that? Were they... Yeah, they loved it. They I were mean, happy you know with what? it? My parents came here in the 60s and there was this sort of civil rights revolution and women's rights revolution and I, my dad fully intended to go back back but my mom's yeah. like I'm not I'm not going to give up this freedom and so they stayed here and they're super open minded I mean they don't they didn't they, there was no temple there was no religion you know they they also said you know marry whoever you want to uh j chandra sekar yeah yeah j Chandra Sekar is here with us. I'll just call him JC, yeah, almost like good. Jay-Z. Yeah, JC is good. much easier. Uh, so how do, how do you then, all right, so you're, you're, you're born out in Chicago. You How do you get into, you eventually end up uh, making the Super Troopers film. I know you made a shorter film before that, but how do you get into filmmaking? Uh, and, and it started out, I think, with a comedy troupe before that, I believe, right? Yeah, I mean, I I was uh, in high school as an actor in plays, whatever. And but I'm from Chicago, so there's this big, you know, Second City and improv. There's a big comedy scene in Chicago, yeah. right? So you get the feeling you're like, oh, that's sort of right there. It's right, you know, it's it, it's possible. And and I was a big fan of Saturday Night Live and all those John Landis movies like uh, Blues Brothers and and Trading Places and Animal House and and so I uh, when I was about 18, I went downtown and I and I. I had written some stand-up jokes, you know. I mean, I, I was sort of funny in in high school, and I tried it out, and and I, you know, it didn't all work, but some of it worked. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to give that a shot, right? And so, I went to school at Colgate University in upstate New York, and I wanted to really try to like, I wanted to sort of do what Monty Python did. That was really my big. I mean, I really loved Python, so I started a comedy group. You know, and I, I had some training in Chicago around comedy groups, so I had some sense of what it was. And we started a comedy group that eventually became Broken Lizard. And we performed at, at Colgate, then we moved to New York City, and, you know, we drank for a year and, and messed around. And then we finally reformed and started started doing... Got sh- serious about yeah, it. Yeah, we were doing shows, and, and Colgate sort of dumps out into New York City, so there were just tons of crowd for us. Mm-hmm. And we were suddenly like an instant success in a way. And... At the time, there were there were a lot of filmmakers, like people like Kevin Smith, who made Clerks, and Eddie Burns, and uh, you know, like Rick Linklater. All these people were taking whatever money they could get together and making fifty thousand dollars yeah. and making a movie and making a movie. So we said, you know, let's try that. So I, I had I had written a script, we adapted it for our group, and we shot this movie Puddle Cruiser. And we got into Sundance, amazingly, and it kind of all went from there. The next, how much money did that cost you? To, that to one make cost that about one hundred ninety grand. Which oh, that's that's is, no a, small. It's amount. substantial, yeah. right? I mean, and, and I went. And most people who spend, uh, you always hear stories like yours, one hundred ninety grand, and then you end up making big movies after that. But I'll bet there are countless people that spend one hundred ninety grand, and it turns out really crappy, yeah. and no one hears about it, and they've now well, wasted their life savings. The road is littered with uh, bankruptcy, debt, and ruin. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, it's a tough, dangerous way to go. I, I, I was, uh, I, I, I spent, I sort of raised about one hundred and thirty grand from doctors and friends and whoever we could. It's a lot of money, believe me. And then I, I put the remaining sixty on a credit card because. 
they thought I was a doctor. It was oh, they, a little bit of reverse racism. They did? Yeah. The credit they card hear the Indian name and yeah, they go... they're like, hey, Dr. Chandra Sekhar. <laughs> and after 60 grand, they called me up. They said, are you really a doctor? I said, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> uh, and luckily, you know, it worked out. I mean, we, we ended up making uh, Super Troopers a couple of years later and that kind of propelled us into the big, big business you know you and you directed that movie i did yeah but, but you directed so you directed that little movie the puddle puddle cruiser puddle cruiser did you have any experience directing uh, when you did super troopers anything else well no i mean i, I in a little it seems bit. to me like that would be a complicated task a little bit to direct a movie and it sounds like you ended up directing this movie and you didn't have a whole lot of experience doing it well i, I directed shorts for our comedy group first mm. and and then uh, we even made a half an hour film even before Puddle Cruiser. So I, I had sort of some sense of it, you know. And even when, when I first made Puddle Cruiser, I would say, let's put the camera here. And I'd look around at the crew to see if they were going to laugh at that because they were really <laughs> seasoned crew. And it, it, you just have, I, I ended up having the right instinct about, yeah. about timing and where to put the camera, but you don't know. Yeah. And with Super Troopers... You know, I, I sort of, uh, on those early films, I became an, I became an, I, I couldn't afford an editor. So I just made someone teach me how to edit mm -hmm. and I learned how to edit. And once you learn how to edit, you're like, oh, I just need these eight shots for and this then scene. When you, so once you know how to edit, you're actually thinking about that before you even shoot it. You're thinking, yeah. here's what I'm going to need later. Yeah. And, and right, right. Like if you look at the great Scorsese scene when... In Goodfellas, where he shoots Spider in the in the feet, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, you think I'm a clown? You do I amuse you? You know that one? That that's twelve shots. You know, it's like it's like the exterior of the bar, a wide inside. It's a three shot of De Niro and his guys, a three shot of uh, Pesci, Spider. I mean, it's like it's the, one of the greatest scenes in film history, and it's it's twelve shots. And it's not too complicated, is what you're saying. Well, it, 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 you know, you watch. You just have to know what you need, yeah, and be a good storyteller and editor, and just sort of, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the hardest part of directing a film? Uh, you know, it's, look, you get a lot of, there's a lot of uh, deference paid to you when you're a director. I mean, people want to please you, yeah. right? So that's fine. It's, it's I, I'm, I act in these movies too. And yeah. so the hard part is, is being across from an actor and, and acting with them. And then, you know, you cut and you're like, oh, here's my note for you. Yeah, you, you tell him what to do. Yeah. He's probably like, oh, this guy. Yeah, this, this guy. This freaking Indian guy <laughs> yeah, telling yeah. me how to act. Exactly. Please, it's some nerve. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then, and then uh, what are the beer fest? You did that. Yeah. I, I, I have to be honest with you. When the last two guys that were in here from this Broken Lizard, what were their names? You remember? Uh, Kevin and Steve. Yeah, they were in here. And I go, I've never seen Super Troopers. They go, you've got to see this. You said that I had to see yes. it. Yes. I've never seen it. You haven't seen it. I have. I still haven't seen it. I did see this Beer Fest movie yeah. by accident. I'm flipping through the channels, and this comes on. I didn't catch, like, the first 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I thought that that... I thought that was a really funny movie. Wasn't it good? That was yeah. great. That was a great movie because I like. I know a lot of people go, "Oh, it's juvenile. It's it's not. You know, it's it's whatever." But I like a movie. If you're gonna make a movie and you're gonna make a a ridiculous movie, make a friggin' ridiculous ass movie. And you know what I mean? Yeah, I loved it. I, I thought mean, it was we, great. We tried to take it really seriously as a sports movie. Yeah, you know, and and just said, okay, there's a competitive beer drinking team. And there's the bad guy beer drinking team. And this is going to be a movie about the two teams going at it. And eventually the best team will win and make it, you know, create these really sort of classic sports moments and never break it. You know, if you're on this team, you take it seriously. Yeah. I thought I thought it was a really fun. Now, you're going to make a follow up pot fest, I heard. Is that well, true? Yeah. I mean, it was a joke at first. The, at the end of the beer fest, uh, we run into Willie Nelson in Amsterdam, and and he's about to go into uh, like this side alley, and he goes, you know, Cheech and Chong were supposed to be on my team, but they were afraid to get on my biodiesel airplane, right? So, uh, uh, do you guys smoke pot? And if you do, would you mind joining me and being on my team, right? And we're like, yeah, okay. So then we we disappear into this room, and so it was a joke. And then there have been so many. Like Willie's, like I, you know, I become friends with him because we made a couple of movies together, and he's like, "When are we making Potfest?" And Cheech Marin's like, "Hey, I want to make you know, like." And I've talked to Snoop Dogg. I've talked to, so we're gonna make it. We've written, we've written some of so it. So you've written some of it. 
I see if I were you, I would be like, let's write this, let's get this out. But do you have to find a studio that's going to make it and everything, or do you have any commitments? Well, or- we'll see. I mean, Warner Brothers made Beer Fest, and that was a miracle because they're not that kind of studio yeah. to make that kind of ode to binge drinking. Uh, and we'll see if they'll make Podfest. But if they won't, I, I have a because feeling- Beer Fest was not a huge commercial success. Well, it was. It was, but then it kind of got a, a, yeah. a following afterwards. Yeah, it was like it's like theatrically, it was sort of you know whatever it was, and then on video, it's massive. Yeah, massive. Yeah, so, I mean all year, Super yeah. Troopers, same thing, same right? Thing. I mean it's same sort of thing. not a great box office, but then yeah, the I mean the the movie in the in the uh, theaters made about twenty, and on video made a hundred. How much does it cost to make Super Troopers? Uh, One point two million. Holy God! No kidding. Yeah. What about Beer Fest? How much does that cost? Uh, Thirteen and a half. Why so much more? Uh, you just get you go. Well, hey, we'll be easy no, if we just spend this it's money. It's not or? even that. It's like when you make a like Super Troopers. We made independently, so we raised our own money, made it. Beer Fest. I went in, you know, I had made Dukes of Hazard before that, right, for Warner okay. Brothers, and it made them a lot of money. And that's probably even more. That was, I don't know what the budget on that. We was, made it for about fifty-five. Okay. And then it probably made about a hundred and eighty, you know, overall, uh, with the foreign, right? So, so I went into the the president of Warner Brothers' office, and and he's, you know, when you make a movie that makes money, they bring you, and they're like, "What do you want to do next?" Yeah. The answer is yes, right? And I said, "Well, I want to do this movie about a competitive beer drinking team, right?" And he goes, "Are you serious?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, "You know, you can make any movie you want with Robert Downey Jr., whoever you want." I'm like. I kind of want to make the beer drinking team movie. He goes, you have a script? I said, yeah. He goes, okay. Uh, our minimum is $13.5 million for a movie. Can you make it for that? I'm like, in my sleep. He goes, <laughs> all right, good. You're greenlit. So their minimum is thirteen. Yeah. How, how much do you think you could, If, for instance, let's just say that uh, we could make Pot Fest. You and I could go make yeah, Pot okay. Fest right now. I'd say I'm, I'm a, a rich uh, guy. Yeah. And I say, Jay, how much money do you need to make this movie? How much could you do it for? I, I think you could do a stripped down version of it for about, you know, I'd say about five and a half. But but realistically, if you had about eight or nine, if you said to uh, Snoop Dogg, I need you for a day, here's a hundred grand. And if you could sort of throw around a little money, you could make a, the a ultimate better one, movie. Right. You know? So this seems to me like uh, it would be a home run. Uh, this, this is a, uh, I'm not a pot smoker myself, but a lot of people are that will just get this movie just because it's about pot. Yeah. And uh, we all know that if you smoke pot, you're too lazy to actually go on BitTorrent and download it for free anyway. So this seems like it could be a real money making movie. This it, seems like it would be a home run. If I you have could a do feeling it, it will be a home run. I mean, but we have to write it. Well, all right. Well, that helps. You so. know, we have an outline, and we, I would get you know, on it. Why don't you now? If if well, if I had this ability, why don't you just do it? Go write it. Like, hey, let's do this. There's other things too. I mean, I, I'm I'm going to make a film this fall called Shotgun Wedding, uh, and you know, I, I'm playing like a, a, a just me basically, and I and I and I meet this younger sort of southern hot girl, and see, this is a, you what, know, when you have a little bit of success, you can what you can do is you can go. I'm going to make a movie. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to cast myself exactly. like this hot ass chick. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, She's yeah. going to fall exactly. madly in love with me. Well, love a few nude scenes. Yeah. This will be great. Then you go in and you cast and you just go, man, I actually kind of like her. I want to start dating her. <laughs> yeah, you're in the movie. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. You described it exactly. Yeah. So, and she, you know, she basically hooks up with me out of like a rebellion against her father and I get her pregnant and the, and the movie's about the wedding and me against her yeah. fairly racist I've heard of women father. do this for with like black guys yeah. despite their dad. I haven't heard about them doing it with the Indian guys. Well, yet. we're making a little bit of a creative <laughs> leap here. <laughs> so th- th- you're going to shoot this when? I, I'm going to shoot it in the fall. All right. So that's all set up. Yeah, I'll have this all done. Well, and... we're starting a cast now, you know. I mean, yeah. you, I have the money and if it if the cast comes together the right way, we'll shoot it. Super Troopers 2? I heard that that is, someone's going to make that. You're going to make that. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, they were, there, was an, there was an audit where they were counting the money on one, and there was a dispute, and that's been going on for two years. I and, hear they do that all the time. They, yeah. These companies, these movie studios, record labels do it too. They, they, they make a movie, and then they go, when everything's said and done, they give Jay a cut of the, the profit, but they go, oh, we, we actually really didn't make a profit on this movie. You go, wait a second, what are you talking about? They have so many ways that they can write it all off, right? And and Yeah, yeah. I mean they 
I mean, for example, I, I looked at a statement and there was a $90 a day uh, uh, parking space fee that was went over for like two years, right? And you're like, what's this? Where's the space? And they're like, oh, what? Uh, you know, they never told us about a space. There's no space, but they're charging 90 bucks a day on it, right? Right. It's these kind of little things you have to go through and go, what is that? They're you have like, to go oh, through everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know what that is. Sorry. Yeah. And you kind of figure it all out. And So then you had to sue or something, I guess, yeah. probably. And and then, is that still going on or has that well, been resolved? we're in the process of settling it. And, and part of the settlement is, is hopefully going to be a sequel. All right. So that now. I read, uh, and Jay Chandra Sekar is here with us. He'll be at the Grog Shop tonight at 7.30. Um, I hear that you were thinking about shooting that in Detroit. Well, you guys had those... what I would say, screw Detroit. Yeah. Why don't you film it here? We'll be much more accommodating. Uh-huh. We have great tax credits for filmmaking. Do it right here in town. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I'm I, putting I, you on the spot. Commit no, to I, it. No, I think it's entirely... <laughs> entirely... Commit to it or I'm calling my three skinhead friends in here who are waiting outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. We'll shoot it here. We'll shoot it here. Uh, but w- why Detroit? Why did you think about doing it there? Uh, that's really a rumor. Oh, I right. mean, you know, like there was, a, there was a Michigan tax credit that was good. Uh, and so, you know... We can get it done. We can get I mean, it done right know, here. I got a rep of the city here. We can get it done here. In the town. movie has got to take Make place on the uh, in an area that looks like the border of of Canada and the U.S. So oh, I'm sure we we have plenty here. of places. Yeah, plenty of border P- trees. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, we have a border. The lake is our border. Yeah, the yeah. lake yeah. right Canada. there. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. we I, we believe me. I'll location scout this for you. Right. We'll be making this. Right. So. But you, you haven't even seen the first one yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm sure. I'm sure we can work something out. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. Okay. Stick with me, kid. We'll get it done. Um, so you're you're married. Yeah. How long have you been married now? Uh, about seven or eight years. You kids? Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, three. Three kids. Yeah. Oh my God, this guy. Three kids. You're busy. Holy moly. Well, I had one. And no then wonder we, you're not we, writing we try, uh, all these movies. <laughs> we tried to have another and we ended up having two at the same time. Oh, so boy. that's how we had three. Oh boy. That's uh, that's dangerous. Yeah. My, my, my uh, phone screener in there. He has three kids by two different women. He's now dating a 21 year old ex stripper. He's 35. And he's guaranteed her that be, by the time he turns 40, he'll have a kid with her, which I think is ridiculous because you could end up having like two kids. You could have twins or oh, something would, like that. Oh, that I think about twins. Uh, that's, that's a, he's I thinking about, about declaring that. bankruptcy, Jay, but he wants to have a kid with this 21-year-old ex-stripper of, yeah. of his. Great girl. What do you, You've you known him 30 seconds. What do you think of that plan? I'm impressed. That's right. <laughs> Goddamn Skippy. The guy knows the player when he sees one. Don't hit the player. Hit the ah, game, Rover. That's great. That's funny. So tell me about the, the show at the grog shop tonight well uh, straight stand-up or what is this no i mean it's a it's a a combination of stand-up and stories about movies you know stories about like how certain things happened in the movies uh and it's you know i was listening to it tonight as i I was doing it last night at the columbus funny bone Mm -hmm. and it's you know it's quite dirty it's Uh, filthy it's filthy it's filthy i i i should probably try to introduce a little more clean humor into it as i roll through the Midwest, but it's sort of too late now. What do your parents think of uh, of that kind of stuff? Were they offended when you... Now you've had some success, they're probably happy. No, they love it. I, I tell them not to come to the stand-up show because uh, I'm honest about my life and what happened and all the sort of, you know, wilder sort of drug stories. Yeah. And uh, I prefer that they wouldn't hear them all. Yeah. And so, they're you know, I'm going to Chicago, they're not going to come. So you're keeping them out so that you they don't come wanna... to the movies and you know they see what happens in that and they did kind you of... go crazy? I mean, were you doing a lot of drugs as a kid? I was. And stuff? Yeah. You know, I, I got into it early. Uh, What'd you do? What's uh, a, what? Tell me everything you've done. Give me the list. Weed, uh, of course. Well, obviously weed. I, I, I at at 16, I was sort of getting into coke. Uh, coke already at the age of 16. Oh, you know, it was happening in in the Chicago area, and it. Kinda... Did you ever do heroin? Uh, yeah, once. Yeah? Yeah. You I, inject that or you smoke no, that or what do you I do? No, I snorted it. Oh, at you a, snort that? At a, uh, at a bachelor sort of kind of party kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I tell so there a bunch story. of hookers. There were a bunch of hookers there. There were. Some bachelor yeah. there there were. Hooker, yeah. Some hookers there that were, were at this I, thing. You know, I, t- I actually tell that story in my, in my stand-up, so. <laughs> so you can see the full story, or you can hear the full story yeah. tonight. Uh, there were, wait, there were hookers at this bachelor Do you want me to tell you the story? Well, I just want to know, did you end up having... Wait, sure. Tell me the tell me the story. Okay. So, 
I was uh, I was living in New York, and I and I uh, was going to this bachelor party in in uh, sort of Midtown Manhattan, and it was this guy who was from Jersey, and so, and you know, they was kind of a tough Jersey guy, and I and I, I arrived late, and I walk in, and there are like thirty guys. You know, two of them are my friends and the rest of them are the groom's friends. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, yo, you know, look like tough Jersey guys, right? <laughs> and so I, I end up sort of uh, trying to catch up. And so, because they're all an hour and a half ahead of me. And so I'm like smoking joints and I'm chugging and I'm doing shots. I'm like, I'm going to catch up, right? It was important to me to catch up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like kind of, you know, you know, a tray of, of Coke goes by, I snort that up and, and then there's a knock on the door, and and then these two strippers come in, and I'm like, you know, at the time I I wasn't really into strippers, right? I was like, ah, eh, you know, you go there, and there are these, everyone's watching you, and like I, I just couldn't get into it, right? Yeah. And I, I've come to understand what's great about them, okay, now, but uh, but at the time I didn't feel that way, and so this stripper, they were going around, they were giving lap dances to everybody, and the stripper sort of comes and stands right next to me. And I was sort of doing that thing that you do at like a, a strip club when you're sort of not into that particular one. You're kind of pretending like you don't even notice her, right? <laughs> She's there in a G-string. Yeah. Like when the fat sort of chubby yeah. one that you could tell yeah. just had a kid three months yeah, ago. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Looking at her yeah. Ceiling. Yeah, right. the ceiling. You yeah. pretend you're with your buddy. I'm really into the conversation. I'm having a deep life conversation <laughs> with the guy sitting next to me because I don't want to see your fat right. ass bitch. Right. Right. So, so she she's like, hey, you want a lap dance? I'm like, nah, I'm good. Go ahead. Move on. And she's like, are you sure they're free? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then one of these Jersey guys goes, oh, we got a faggot over here. Right? <laughs> and I got to tell you, like, I, I I am, I'm like pro-gay, right? I'm pro-gay marriage. I'm pro-gay adoption, all that stuff. As long as it's not you it's, that's being you know accused what? of being gay. As a guy, you just don't want to be called that, yeah. right? And it wasn't just that. The, then the friends started chanting it, faggot, right? <laughs> In, including, I think, the stripper, right? It was just this awful moment, right? Awful moment. And I'm like, get on here, right? Get on here. Ride this pony, and bitch. And so she gets on me, and she's grinding against me and i've done a little bit of coke right so i'm soft yeah and and i'm like trying to prove that i'm straight (laughs) and she's grinding and it's just not happening right it's just not happening and she gets off me and she's like oh please right and she she walks away and then i'm trying to get my mojo back so i'm like you know you know i i smoke a joint i drink and i I do a line another line of blow and then a line uh, a, a tray of brown powder comes by right and I'm like, oh, heroin, no thanks, right? So I pass that to my doctor friend who's sitting next to me who promptly snorts up a line. <laughs> and I'm like, no, dude, that's heroin, right? And he goes, oops. And I'm like, what do you mean, oops? And he goes, you're not going to leave me alone, are you? Oh, no. And I said, no, you know, I'm not a dick, right? So I, I snorted up one and then another <laughs> one for balance, right? Uh, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it. Let's wow. see what happens, right? And around this time, the 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 best man comes up and he goes, hey, we're collecting money because everyone's going to have sex with the strippers. <laughs> and I was like, everyone? <laughs> and I'm like, how much do I have to pay you for you not to chant bag at me? I mean, I'll give you, a, he goes, a hundred bucks. So I give him a hundred bucks. And I'm just kind of like, you know, you're just wondering, oh, what's it going to be like? What's, what's going to happen here? And then there's a really, you know, loud knock on the door and it's six New York City policemen. Oh. And I'm like, oh no. So I leap up and I'm like, I slip out the door by them. And I assume my friends have come with me. They haven't. And I'm like, oh God, I got to go back in there. So I go back in and I said to my friend, Kevin Heffernan, who you met. Yeah. And I'm like, there's Coke, there's heroin. There's now hookers in the other room and six New York City policemen. He goes, you think we should leave, dude? (laughs) (laughs) And so that was it. That was the one time I I, I inadvertently tried heroin. And (laughs) and, uh, I never tried it again. It was great. What does it feel like when you're on it? I've never done that. um, It was like they describe it, like an all-over body kind of orgasm. It was like... No kidding. The best feeling? It was great. You know, I hate to say it. I I mean, there's a reason these drugs are popular. I I don't think you should try it because it's so... It's so powerful that I don't know that everybody can resist it. Yeah. You know? So, so, so uh, tell me, this was at, you were how old at this point? 20, I mean, 23 at, at or something? At that point, I was probably like 20, 24, 24 25. Uh, how old are you now? Uh, 45. You have to think about it. See, I'm getting that same. I'm like, how old am I? When someone <laughs> asks me, I go, wait a second, am I 36, 37? What am I? 
Uh, so did you, when you got married and had kids, did you, is that when you stopped using drugs or what? what well, yeah. Or I mean, did I, you stop no, using drugs? I, I, Still doing blow? No, I mean. <laughs> Occasionally. No. A party here and there. <laughs> I rarely say no. No, I mean, look, I, I, I went through a little period where I, I was, you know, I went to a lot of dead shows. I did some acid, you know, a lot of mushrooms. There was an ecstasy thing going in LA for a while when I got there. Uh, but if you have kids, it. It, it, I mean, you can't get up in the morning. You have to get up in the morning. Yeah. And the truth is, is your drug use more important than getting your kid awake and fed and on? No, it's not. So, yeah, yeah I just like stopped doing. I, I never stopped anything. I do just you think that that, slowed down. Do you think that that affects your creativity? Uh, drugs? Does it make you more creative? Less creative? I, I think it makes you more creative. I mean, I, I, I certainly think that most of our films were written. Uh, a lot of the great jokes of our movies are written stoned. Do you think that I should start smoking weed or doing drugs? Because I don't do anything. Yeah, I would. I would do that if you want to. I'm just speaking in a professional manner. You say that you know maybe I could start smoking up, man. That's right. I, I, again, it's like you hate to be out here advocating for people to do drugs, but I think you know heroin is one thing. You shouldn't do that, right? But but smoking a little bit of pot is a great thing to write jokes. Yeah. It really is like a uh, J Chandra Sekar. Uh, he's uh, been in and directed Super Troopers, Beer Fest. What else? Uh, you directed um, the Dukes of Hazard movie. Dukes of Hazard, uh, a movie called Club Dread, uh, which is a horror film. I haven't seen that with, one either. With Bill Paxton. Uh, Arrested I like Development, Bill Paxton. Too. Yeah, Arrested Development. How does that work? Uh, like, Since it's an ongoing show and you only do a couple episodes, how do you direct something that yeah, I would think like, like something everyone on the. I would think I that wanna, everyone on the, you know, all different. the actors would be like, "Hey, we got this. We've been playing this for, hey, hey uh, you know, JC, we got this. Like, we know what we're doing." Do you have here. to watch every episode beforehand to know well, how it works. With or? that show, I did the third one, and then I did like the, I think the fifth one, and then a couple more after that. So it was, I, I came in on the ground floor. They hadn't gelled yet. No, and you, you actually sort of could direct them. Yeah, you're like, you know, this show. Let me show you a different version of your show. And you kind of, you know, you, you adjust how, how the rhythm is of it. And then, and then you try to say, I, I think your show works best this way. And, and they use that and they're like, oh, we like this. We didn't love that. And you kind of, you know, the first six really evolved the show and then it, it starts to sort of groove. So you, you, you take credit for the success of that show. Episode three is what set the ground. I believe basically. so. <laughs> I believe that was the beginning of something special. No, I mean, look, that, that show had... The best writers, the best actors, and a lot of great directors. So it was. Why did it keep going off the air? Why because, people just wouldn't uh, watch it? So. Nobody would watch it. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. You yeah. know, they just wouldn't watch it. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of great. Show, like I work on the show Happy Endings. It's having trouble getting people to watch. Uh, what Community. Is, what's that? Uh, Happy Endings is on what? Uh, ABC. ABC. Okay. Uh, Community. Yeah. Uh, I've done a bunch of those. Yeah. And you know, it's it's limping along. People are just so. There's so many things for people to, the, so to distract stuff. people. There's and, so much and, stuff. I mean, you walk down the street, everyone's looking at their phone. They're, I mean, you go, it, it drives me crazy. You go to like uh, the World Series or something, or you go to the Super Bowl. You go to the Super Bowl, you look in the stands. People aren't even watching the game. They're, they're, they're looking at their phone. Me off. I know. They're what taking pictures. Hey, look, I'm at the Super Bowl as the play goes on right. in the background. I mean, right. it's, Jesus a, it's astonishing. It, it, uh. Uh, Jay's going to be at the Grog Shop tonight. At 7.30. For tickets to this show, call 216-321-5588. That's 216-321-5588 or grogshop.js. I would give your website address. But I think it's GS. Uh, GS. Is that, did I say JS? Grogshop.js. Uh, I would give your website address, but no one will be able to spell that. Just start typing <laughs> J-C-H-A-N-D, and hopefully it, it, will, it will autocomplete on yeah. Google. Yeah. Uh, let me go to Alex. You're on Rover's Morning Glory with J. Chandra Sekar. Good morning, Alex. And I'm running way behind. I think our Rochester station has already dropped off, probably, yeah. because uh, right. our satellite time is up. Uh, Alex, go ahead. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? I'm doing good. What's happening? I just wanted to say that Club Dread is one of my all-time favorite movies that you were in. Like, people come over to my house for the first time. I make them watch that movie because it's one of the most hilarious films I've ever seen. I just want to say I'm super impressed with that movie. Like, I love it to death. Th thanks, Alex. Thanks. I mean, it's 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 like a, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's like a, an 80s, like, schlock 
horror movie mm-hmm. that is played super straight. We play we play the staff of like a, a club med on an island, and one by one we're getting murdered, picked off by a guy with a machete. Yeah, and so you know it's this like there's lots of bikinis and nudity and drugs and fun and murder. Yeah, if you if you had a bunch of money, someone said, "Hey, uh, here's a hundred million dollars. You can make any movie you want." What would you make? You don't even have to spend the hundred million. You just have an unlimited budget. What would you make? Ah, uh, God, that's a that's an interesting question. I don't know. I can't. I can't even. I can't. I've never even thought. Can you give me a minute and let me come back to it? Sure. Sure. Well, no, actually, I can't because we <laughs> have we to end done? the show. Okay. Good. Yeah, we're we're late. You were a little bit uh, late getting here. I was. Usually Indians are very punctual. You know, the problem was I was driving behind a police car the whole way. Oh, yeah. Well, then you can't. And he was doing 75, and I'm like, that's the that's the speed limit yeah, right there. I mean, I hate that. When you get behind a cop, oh, my God, it's the worst. Yeah. I love watching people. If the cop's ahead of me and, like, the people coming in another lane, they don't know the cops. I just love watching in my rear view as the people speed up and then they get to the cop and they're like slam on the brakes it's the greatest thing i love it that was me today (laughs) i saw him on his walkie talkie and i'm like okay boss uh all right go see jay at the grog shop tonight at 7 30 uh for tickets call 216-321-5588 i appreciate you coming in Thanks. And uh, sometime we will uh, come back. What is it? Uh, we have uh, some tickets to give away, Rover, if you'd like to give them away. Oh, all right. I have how many tickets? We do uh, three pairs. Three pair. Okay, three pair of tickets to the show tonight. We'll start with caller 30, 1-866-YO-ROVER. That's 1-866-967-6837. I'll give you tickets to see J. Chandra Sekar. At the that never rolls off the tongue. I have to like literally like. Yeah, try no, to, I can see you struggling. <laughs> see, I, I I do. I got the you're whole thing. It. I'm like in the middle. It's say like S A Y. I'm like I'm having yeah. to do the the whole thing out there. Someone says, "Good job on these smoking hot blondes that you put in these uh, movies of yours." Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's an exhaustive <laughs> casting process. I see everybody in town. <laughs> um, all right. I've got to run. We are running late. Jay, thank you for uh, for coming in. Thanks. Have fun while you're here, and go see him at the Grog Shop tonight at 7.30. We will be back live tomorrow morning on Rover's Morning Glory. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, Rover's Morning Glory.